What's up guys, Jay here, and today I'm going to give you the 101 course on how to play the Engineer class in Deep Rock Galactic. We're going to cover how the Engineer plays, the weapons and gadgets he has access to, and the mission types that he is best suited for. If you're new to this series, we've already covered the other three classes in the game, so check out those videos if you haven't yet, but if you guys are ready, let's meet Deep Rock's own combination of Tony Stark and Dr. Eggman, the Engineer. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. Turrets and explosions! You've come to the right place, mate! So, you want to play Engineer? Well, that's great to hear because the Engineer is my personal favorite class, so you made a good choice. Now, personal preference aside, the Engineer complements the other classes very well. The Scout has mobility, the Gunner has firepower, the Driller has utility, and the Engineer rounds out the team composition by being great at playing defensively. That's not to say that he can't dish out some good damage, because believe me, he can, but when it comes to keeping a set area safe and covered, the Engineer has a lot of tools to help with just that. If you like playing a more support-style role and setting up a foothold, on your missions for your team to hunker down in, then the Engineer is the class for you. Identify targets and exterminate. That's how it's done. Like the other classes, the Engineer has an assortment of weapons that complement his style. His weapons are quite interesting, with options ranging from standard firearms to explosives to more eccentric items. In any event, simply put, the Engineer's weapons allow him to handle many different situations in many different ways. Next, like we did with the other classes, we'll go over each weapon and piece of equipment the Engineer has, the kinds of situations they're useful in, and some upgrades that you may consider using. And remember that we won't be covering overclocks for the sake of simplicity. The first primary weapon the Engineer has in his arsenal is the Warthog Auto 210 Shotgun. A very simplistic weapon, yet also a very elegant one at the same time. The Warthog is a semi-automatic shotgun that is mainly a effective at close to mid-range, but surprisingly can actually function at pretty long range as well. The Warthog has a good rate of fire and a decent chance to stun enemies, and a fast reload thanks to its magazine ammo system. Simple but effective, the Warthog will make keeping the bugs at bay an easy task. If you want to use the Warthog, upgrades like loaded shells and bigger pellets can increase your damage, and minor adjustments can make the gun shoot fully automatic. The second primary option for the Engineer is the Stubby Voltaic SMG. More of a machine pistol in my opinion, since you only use one arm when using this thing, but never mind. Anyway, the Stubby SMG is a fully automatic bullet hose that has a decent spread and a high rate of fire. As the name suggests, it comes equipped with its own built-in electric modification. By default, every shot has a 25% chance to electrocute the target on hit, damaging them over time while also slowing their movements. This makes the Stubby a great option for stunning those annoying Praetorians or high value targets. If you want to bring the Stubby, some fun upgrades would be upgraded capacitors for a higher chance to shock, conductive bullets to do even more damage to shocked enemies, and electric arc for a chance to chain lightning groups of enemies. The third primary weapon the engineer has is the Lock 1 Smart Rifle, or as I like to call it, the Loki Rifle. What I said earlier about the dwarf being like Tony Stark, a lot of that comes from this weapon. The Loki Rifle certainly is the most unique primary weapon in the engineer's arsenal. It's also one of the few weapons in the game that has an alternate firing mode. Tapping the fire button will cause a single shot to be fired normally, and holding down the fire button will cause a targeting interface to appear and begin putting marks on enemies within range. Upon releasing the fire button, the weapon fires at all enemies that were locked on with the amount of bullets displayed on each indicator. When a locked enemy is killed, any excess locks will not cause additional shots to be fired. When using this alternate firing mode, anything blocking the tracer will be shot instead, which can include terrain, other enemies, or teammates. Basically, think of this gun as a big version of the smart pistol from Titanfall and you'll understand how it works. It's a little hard to get the hang of at first, but once you do, it's very effective. Some upgrades to consider for the smart rifle are CCD array for a wider tracking area, smart targeting software for more efficient targeting, and electric generator for a shocking amount of damage. Get it? The Engineer also has an interesting array of secondary weapons. Remember when I said in the beginning that the Engineer has some eccentric options for weaponry, and that he was also like Dr. Eggman? I was mainly referring to his secondaries. The first option the Engineer has for secondary weapons is the Deep Core 40mm Personal Grenade Launcher. A big tube that shoots a big bomb, the grenade launcher fires heavy-duty grenades that have slow speed, high area of effect, and are affected by gravity which limits how far they can travel. Basically, the farther away the enemy is, the higher up you have to aim in order to compensate. It also has a high built-in fear factor, which basically means that anything that survives the explosion might be left running away in terror. It's a great choice for taking chunks out of armor or scattering big groups of enemies. If you want to bring the grenade launcher, some upgrades to consider are fragmentary shell and larger payload for even bigger area damage, and incendiary compound for some extra heat. 
The second option for secondaries in the engineer's arsenal is the breach cutter. This thing is the result of someone taking a mining tool, looking at it, and saying, this isn't dangerous enough, and so they turned it into a weapon of mass destruction. The breach cutter might be one of, if not the most versatile weapons in the entire game. The gun shoots an unblockable huge line of plasma energy that can go through enemies, armor, and even the terrain. You can get insane collateral kills and even hit enemies on the other side of walls. The only thing about this weapon that I would say is negative is its small ammo pool and long reload time, which is pretty good if that's the worst thing you can say about it. If you're bringing the breach cutter, some nice upgrades would be prolonged power generator for even longer range, disruptive frequency tuning for mass stunning, and if you want to be fancy, triple split line for three times the fun. The third secondary weapon option for the engineer is the shard diffractor. A huge crystal mounted into a superheating chamber to fire a big laser beam? This thing is definitely not safe to shoot this close to your face. It's probably doing more damage to you than to the bugs if I'm being honest here. It is however insanely fun to use and capable of putting out high amounts of damage. The shard diffractor features an ammo system that's unique compared to the other weapons we've seen so far. It has a battery with a maximum charge capacity rather than a conventional magazine. Firing the weapon drains the battery while releasing the trigger will recharge it, which draws from the weapon's total charge capacity. Also, the battery must be fully charged in between uses and there is a brief spin-up delay before it starts shooting. The beam itself has infinite range and inflicts continuous damage to any target impacted by the beam, along with anything surrounding the impact point. It also causes an enemy's temperature to rise, eventually resulting in them being set on fire. Simply put, it's a death laser, it's a lot of fun to use, and it burns things to a crisp. If you're running the Shard Diffractor, some useful upgrades are Impact Splash and Particle Splattering for more area of effect, and High Intensity Heating for more powerful heat buildup. As it is with each class in the game, the engineer also has several options for throwable grenades that he can bring along. The Laser Utility Refraction Emitter, or Lore Grenade, creates a holographic decoy of a dwarf performing some interesting dance moves. The lore is designed to distract enemies and take attention away from the team. The plasma burster, when thrown and hits the ground, will immediately detonate creating four medium plasma explosions which detonate in a sequence in a line, following the direction it was thrown. The bursts deal good damage and can also apply fear to enemies it doesn't directly kill. The proximity mines, when thrown, stick to whatever surface they land on and create an area around them. Anything bigger than a standard bug will set off the mine when it enters the area and the mines can trigger up to four times before before being destroyed. Finally, the Shredder's Swarm Grenade, when thrown, will create a small radius where Shredder drones appear and seek to destroy any nearby enemies for a limited time. If you weren't convinced the Engineer was Eggman yet, these will do it for you. The support tool the Engineer brings to the table is arguably his most powerful tool, the LMG Sentry Gun. The Sentry Gun is an autonomous defense turret that once placed and constructed will indiscriminately fire at any enemy that enters its range and view. The Sentry has its own pool of ammo that it draws from and an amount of loaded ammo that's indicated above the player's normal ammo counter. When the Sentry runs out of loaded ammo, the player has to interact with the Sentry to reload it manually. The Sentry itself has some interesting choices for upgrades that you can choose from, but there's one that determines a lot about how it plays. In the first slot, you can choose either the Gemini system upgrade, which gives you two sentries instead of one, or the LMG Mark II, which keeps only one sentry but makes it much more powerful. There's really no right or wrong choice, it's just down to what the situation calls for. Either way, the sentry gun is fantastic and helps to keep an area covered and securing a safe place for your team to rally to, and it has many useful applications on missions. The last piece of equipment the engineer has is his traversal tool, the platform gun. The thing is pretty self-explanatory, albeit a little unconventional. The gun shoots projectiles which, when impacted with the terrain, will grow to form large circular platforms that can be used for many different purposes. Most commonly, they'll be used for making makeshift staircases out of deep holes or bridges to get across gaps in the cave system, but they can be used to help set up a gunner's zipline, for example, or even make a place for a pipeline segment. Simply put, the platform gun is a useful tool in giving you that little extra ledge you need to get out of whatever situation you're in. One thing to note about this tool is that it makes the engineer and the scout the best of friends. If there's ever any annoying minerals in impossible places to get to, the engineer can just put a platform underneath it, and the scout, using his handy grappling hook, can just zip up to collect it. Time for a cold one once this is done. So now that we've covered the basics of what the engineer can do, and the kind of toolbox he has access to, just what kinds of missions are he best suited for? Well firstly, on-site refining missions are a good pick because not only can you protect the central station with your sentry guns effectively, but you can also use your platform gun to help with the pipelines if needed. Also, escort missions are a good choice because you can effectively cover Doretta when she has to be refueled, as well as during the final event. Finally, industrial sabotage missions are a good pick because you have to do a lot of defending between the hacking pods 
and the caretaker at the very end. But just remember, you can play the engineer on any mission type so long as you're having fun. So what do you guys think about the engineer? Is he as cool as you thought he'd be or would you rather just stick to drilling and shooting? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.